In the first two parts of this episode, we looked at optimization profiles for a single parameter. In a moment, we'll turn our attention to dealing with two parameters. But before we do, why is it that DarwinX produces these tutorials and videos? Well, it's to help you become a better trader. Because if your trading performance improves, then your trading systems will attract more investor capital and everyone benefits. The investors get better returns, you get more success fees, and the DarwinX vision gets realised faster. That's why we do it. Now, if you're not already a trader on the DarwinX platform, make sure you follow the link that's top right now to learn more about how you can join the DarwinX movement and how your trading systems might start to attract investor capital too. Okay, so let's get back and bring our attention back to how we visualise these profiles when we optimise two parameters. And we actually have two ways of doing this. The first is with the use of a surface as shown here. So here, the values for each parameter that we're testing are along the two horizontal axes and the performance is displayed on the vertical axis. Now, all of the rules that we've already looked at still apply here. So firstly, you need to be looking for an overall net positive performance as shown in the example here. Secondly, you don't want to see any erratic results, which are an indicator of either overfitting or low sample sizes, or probably both. And thirdly, you still need to be excluding any edge outliers from your selection process, although in this example it doesn't look like there are any of these. So the selection process itself is actually very similar. One thing I would add is that if there are any areas of the surface where a small change in the parameters leads to a very steep fall in performance, for example at the rear of the surface that you can see here, so here the surface falls off really quickly behind, which would be a concern for me trading these parameters so close to that cliff edge. For me, a much safer and more robust selection would come from this area, where any fall off in performance is much shallower, even though the performance is slightly lower. And indeed, this principle actually also applies to the single parameter profiles that we saw earlier. Now, the second way of viewing data from two parameters is on a multi-dimensional bar chart like the one that you can see here. And I actually prefer to use this technique more than using a surface. So here, the first parameter is actually represented along the x-axis, and the values for the second parameter are represented by the colours of the bars. And personally, I just find it easier to pinpoint the parameters that I want to use by taking this approach as opposed to a 3D surface. Although I'm sure a lot of people do prefer the surface visualisation method. Once again, all of the techniques that we've already mentioned also apply here in terms of selecting the most robust parameters. So how do we represent these optimization profiles with three parameters? Well, this is where it starts to get a lot harder. The best way I've found is to view the results in pairs of two parameters and then to change the dimensions of the chart to look at a different pair. And you do that until you get a consensus in your own mind about which values are going to be best. This is okay for three parameters, but any more than this, it all begins to get a little bit crazy. So this is just yet another reason why I only ever optimise a maximum of three parameters. But as I've said on countless occasions, if I can, I try to keep it to two parameters, the two parameters that are the most important and relevant to the system. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this episode. Next time, I'm going to be looking at my preferred ways of measuring backtest performance. And so the metric that I use to produce these values that we've seen on the charts and the surfaces today. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you get notified when this episode comes out. And please do give me a thumbs up before you head off and I'll see you next time.